Namo Buddhaya, this is Abhinav and I welcome you. In this video, I am sharing my learnings from the Middle Discourses 30, 31, which is titled The Shorter Discourse at Gosinga. The link to the entire discourse is given in the description. You can read the discourse to get your insights. In this video, basically, uh, sorry, in this discourse, uh, it's basically, uh, uh, it's basically, this discourse is about uh, the harmony between monastics, how three monastics uh, maintain their harmony in the Sangha, right? So, the context is that once Buddha was staying at Natika in the brick house, and uh, at that time, Venerables Anuruddha, Nandiya and Kimbila were staying in the Sol Forest Park at Gosinga. Then what happened was that in the late afternoon, Buddha came out of the retreat and went to that park. The park keeper saw the Buddha coming off at the distance and said that uh, don't please go there, there some uh, monks are meditating, right? whose nature is to desire only the self. That means they are they are meditating for their own welfare. Do not disturb them. So Anuradha just heard Buddha coming. So he said, Ki, no, 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 he is our teacher. Please let him in. So they arranged everything and, you know, and they made Buddha sit, right? And then Buddha said, I hope you are living in harmony, appreciating each other without quarreling, blending like milk and water and regarding each other with kindly eyes. So Anuradha said, yes, sir, we live in harmony like this. Then Buddha asked, how do you live like that way? So Anuruddha said, "In Sir, I am, we, we, I am very fortunate to live together with spiritual companions such as these. I consistently treat these venerables with kindness by way of body, speech and mind, both in public and in private. I think, why don't I set aside my own ideas and just go along with these venerables' ideas? And that's what I do. Though we are different in body, sir, we are one in mind, it seems to me. And you know, this is, has profound implications as to how we live in our family life also. So this is basically between monastics, but I think it has lessons for us as in our family life, husband, wife. You know, if we can uh, set aside our, our attachment to our ideas and, you know, accept what the, you know, our uh, uh, better half's ideas are, you know, some way, you know, we can find a middle way, it will help us. In the family you know, also, right? And in a Sangha also definitely. If we are part of any Sangha, then everyone will have divergent views. So, so you know, what basically we have to do is that we have to conscious make a conscious attempt to maintain the harmony of the Sangha or maintain the harmony of our family. Right? Uh, so, and Nandia, Venerables Nandia and Kimbila spoke likewise. That's how we live in harmony, appreciating each other. Good, good, Anuradha and friends, but I hope you are living diligently, keen and resolute. Indeed, sir, how do you live that way? So now, now they are saying, how do they live diligently? Right, so we can find our own kind of takeaways from this. So in that, in this case, sir, whoever returns first from arms round prepares the seeds and puts out the drinking water and the rubbish bin. If there is anything left over, whoever returns last eats as if they like. Otherwise, they throw it out where there is little that grows or drops it into water that has no living creatures. Then they put away the seeds, drinking water and rubbish bin and sweep the refectory. If someone sees the pot of water for washing, drinking or the toilet is empty, then they set it up. If he can't do it, he summons another with a wave of the hand and they set it up by lending each other a hand to lift. But we don't break into speech for that reason. And every five days we sit together for the whole night and discuss the teachings. That's how we live diligently, right? So all these things we used to do. Good Anuradha and friends, but as you live diligently like this one, have you achieved any superhuman distinction in knowledge and vision? So here from uh, uh, Anuradha says that they have achieved the first absorption, the second absorption, the third absorption, the fourth absorption, then being in the dimension, remaining in the dimension of infinite space, remaining in the dimension of nothingness, cessation of perception and feeling. So so they have like achieved all these distinctions and so buddha said good good there is no better or finer way of meditating at ease than this then buddha gave them a dhamma talk and encouraged them and after which he got up from his seat and left the venerables then uh, the, the the all the three they accompanied the buddha for a little way before turning back but when they were turning back nandiya and kumbhika asked to anuruddha did we tell you that we had gained such and such meditations and attainments up to the ending of defilements as revealed to the Buddha. So there was this culture and there is always this thing in the monastic order that in if you uh, uh, say that I have achieved 
more than what you actually done that's like counted as a offense right and it has its implications in the in the veneer right so they said did we ever tell you so it's it's something not to be very openly said it has to be very subtle so uh, the so so uh, so the anurudh said that the venerables you did not tell me that you have gained but i discovered it by comprehending your minds because you get those kind of abilities when you reach that level of meditation that person can comprehend other person's mind so i discovered it by comprehending your minds and deities also told me i answered when the buddha directly so since the buddha directly asked me i answered it right so the lesson for us is never ever boast about our own meditative attainments right whatever we have whatever we where we are don't boast anything then the native spirit diga parajna went up to the buddha board and said to him the vajis are lucky the vajian people are so lucky that the realized one the perfected one stays there as well as the three gentlemen anuruddha nandiya and kimbala right so they, he he came to me he came to buddha and said that you know they the the vajian people are very lucky that they are there right then buddha said yes true if the family from which those three gentlemen went forth from from the lay life to homelessness were to recollect those venerables with confident heart then that would be for a family is lasting so this is how it is that if we recollect anyone who is an arhant who is a fully awakened person or who is a buddha like for example if i sit and recollect the buddha's uh, buddha's qualities of awareness and compassion i would be filled i would my mind would be purified when i do that right so we can also sit in contemplation of the buddha's qualities right so that's what we one of the three refuges buddha dharma and sangha so when we take refuge in the buddha we take refuge in the buddha's qualities right right so this is this is the uh, middle discourse 31 shorter discourse at gosinga it's about the monastic uh, harmony but we can apply the same teaching for our family and uh, our family's harmony also because that is also very very important as we work on this path uh, that is my sh- some short learning do share your uh, 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 learning insights from the reading of this this discourse in the comment section thank you so much for watching this video namo buddhaya namo buddhaya